All right, thank you for coming in. I will be your interviewer today, and I just have a list of technical questions for you that we can just run through today. Does that work? Perfect, that works for me. Awesome, uh, let's start with just general finance technicals. Um, can you walk me through how you go from revenue to free cash flow in the projections? Yeah, of course. Um, so with starting with revenue, you subtract cost of goods sold minus operating expenses, um, which brings you down to operating income. At operating income, you multiply that by one minus the tax rate um, to take you to net income. Net income will be the first line item on your cash flow statement. You will add back depreciation and other non-cash expenses, and then you will subtract uh, capital expenditures and changes in working capital. And then uh, what do you usually use for the discount rate? For the discount rate, assuming we're talking about a public company, is it okay to make that assumption? Yes. For a public company, I would use the weighted average cost of capital for um, the discount rate. Okay, and uh, how do you calculate that? The equation to calculate the weighted average cost of capital, and I'll use WAC from here on forward, is the cost of equity times the percentage of equity plus the cost of debt times uh, the percentage of debt times one minus the tax rate plus the cost of preferred stock times the percentage of preferred stock. Okay. And then how do you calculate the cost of equity? That's a great question. The cost of equity is calculated um, by taking the risk-free rate, adding it to beta times the risk-free premium. And let's say that you use the leverage free cash flow rather than the unlevered free cash flow in your DCF, what would be the effect of doing so? The effect of doing so would calculate your cost of equity um, and the free cash flows, uh, the free cash flows would give you your cost of equity um, since you're effectively repaying your debt back through interest payments. So you mentioned that for public companies, you would use WAC as the discount rate. What would you use for private companies? So for a private company, it's fairly difficult to use WAC um, based on the idea that um, there is no private market or there is no um, market capitalization in a private market. And so typically the best way to use a discounted rate in, a, in private markets is to either run it through an auditor um, or to take a public market comparable and to use the WAC that they used. And you can find that through some of the, their public filings. What does beta mean intuitively? Intuitively, beta is measuring a stock price's volatility against the volatility of the market. Okay. Okay, awesome. So we finished the finance portion. I want to move on to the equity value-based interview questions. And uh, let's just start with the first one, which is what is the formula for enterprise value? The formula for enterprise value is calculated by market capitalization plus debt plus uh, preferred stock plus minority interest minus cash. Why do we look at both enterprise value and equity value? So the reason we look at enterprise value and equity value is because equity value is attributed only to shareholders who own equity. Um, if you were to bring in debt holders, debt holders plus equity would get you to enterprise value, which would represent the value of the entire firm. And then could a company have a negative equity value? And if so, what would that mean? No, a company cannot have a negative equity value because you cannot have a negative shares outstanding and you also cannot have a negative share price. And can a company's enterprise value ever be negative? Yes. Um, the reason why a company's enterprise value can be negative is because, as I mentioned before, as part of the formula, you subtract cash. So if a company is, has excessive cash on their balance sheet, um, more so than the debt and the capitalization of the business, you could have a negative uh, enterprise value. Okay. Cool. Awesome. That concludes it for the enterprise value-based questions. I have a few more questions on industry-based. Um, and my first one for you is, let's say you had $10 million to invest in anything that you want, what would you invest it in? It's a really good question. I think that if I was given $10 million, I would create a diversified portfolio that had a heightened level of risk just based on the fact that I'm young. And so because I'm young, I can increase my risk level because if I were to lose that, I would have a longer period of time to be able to um, make up those losses. I would have 40% of my portfolio be invested in venture capital and private equity. 
I would have 20% of my portfolio be invested in private and public real estate. I would have 20% of my portfolio be invested um, in public equities and the remainder of the $10 million I would spread across angel investments. Okay. And uh, if you owned a small business and you were approached by a larger company about an acquisition, how would you think about the offer and how would you make a decision on what to do? And would you just do it? Yeah. Well, if I was approached to um, have my business be acquired, I would first be excited about the opportunity. The factors that, would, that I would consider in a sale would be number one, the price of the acquisition. How much was this company looking to buy my business for? The second would be, and what form of payment would this acquire um, buy my business for? Would they give me stock options? Um, would they try to buy me in form of debt? Or would they give me a cash option? Uh, and then I would look at, you know, as I built this business, I had a vision for it originally. And so I would like to see what this acquire has um, in store for the future plans of the company. Okay. Makes sense. So I'll close out with a final question. And I just want to know what's a company that you admire and why? A company that I admire is a company called Early Admit. And this business operates in the educational consulting market. The value proposition of this business is twofold. One is a focus on affordability, and the second is a focus on diversity. The business originally went to market servicing deferred MBA candidates and has since focused on the early career consulting market. Their mission is to help college students recruit and land jobs at top finance and consulting firms. And I'm really excited to see the impact that this business is gonna have. Okay. Awesome, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in to our investment banking mock interview. I thought that Devon did extremely, extremely well. On one side, he remained extremely calm and poised during the entire interview. And then on the second side, he did really well with the finance technicals. He was able to showcase his knowledge and explain it in a very concise manner. As you saw, this was a sample of a few questions and not the entire list, but if you want to see more examples of questions, we've actually linked a much larger list in our written guide, so I would highly recommend for you to go and see it. But then, this is the end of the course, I'll see you next time.